is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Hi. Hello, everybody. Thanks again. I say this every time. Hello, everybody. Thanks again for joining us. What can we say that's different? Howdy, folks. Welcome. We did that on the third episode. We oh, were like, man. We're, well, welcome to the old west. <laughs> We've done so many. Maybe we just stick to what this episode we do chip voice. Quinn, you are such a chip monster. You're like a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, for those out there that are obsessed with candy like my sister, I am not that kind of person. I am a chip girl all the way like my mom. That is true. I too am a chipmunk. Happy episode 75, Quinn. Thanks for joining us for it. I'm Casey. I'm Quinn. And we're here to do some do some fun stuff this week. We got some really including eating chips. <laughs> Yay! Oh, we won't put you through that torture of listening to Quinn Chew. So you need to hurry up and get that little bowl done there, Missy. So let's talk this week. We just got back from vacation. We put uh, 1,800 plus miles on the old minivan and we had a really great trip. Yes, it was very great. It was very great. We went, let's see, what states did we go through? Well, obviously Iowa. Then we, we went were in, through uh, Missouri because we saw the St. Louis Arch. We did. We went through Illinois, Michigan. Indiana, Michigan, Nebraska. What else? Kansas. Kansas. Kansas, Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. We, well, yeah. Yeah. So we saw, we saw where the uh, Chiefs played football. Yeah. We drove by the old Chiefs stadium. Where did dad take you on a tour of? Indiana University. Yes. Best college. We got to go see IU in Bloomington. Go Hoosiers. That was fun. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hoosiers. So, yes, we had a lot of fun with family and friends. And now we're back. Back to life. Back to reality. Reality isn't as fun as the vacation was. But, hey, it's it's pretty good. And something else is going on. Somebody's birthday's tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mom. Happy birthday. It's my mom's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> what? No, it's not. Okay. It's your birthday. Fine. Fine. I'm turning 12. Congratulations. Today, I never really thought that today's the last day you're going to be 11. I don't know. I feel like I'm turning 13 because I already feel 12, even though that's kind of weird. But Well, you are really young for your grade, so a lot of your friends already are, have been 12 and turning 13 and all the things, but you're just a baby in that class. So, so was it last episode? Yeah. So last episode, we talked about presidential pets and... I think Ren was pleading her case on how we should get a pet and how her fish isn't enough of a pet for her. And I kind of made the side comment that Clover didn't work out. So if you guys have been listening to us, we used to have a cat named Clover. And if you didn't catch the episode on when we talked about how we don't have Clover anymore, there was a boy that wrote me who was like, what happened to Clover? Did she die? And no, Clover didn't die. Clover was not a house cat. She would sit by the patio door and she would want to go outside all the time. And all she wanted to do was run around the neighborhood and chase birds and hunt and do whatever and run around. And she never wanted to come inside. She was just an outdoor cat. It, she just, she just didn't want to be inside. And so thankfully, since my parents live on a nice little farm in South Dakota, Clover got to go live with them and she is living her best life. So when we go back to South Dakota, we get to visit Clover and she's living a good life and now we're petless. So yeah, that's what happened to Clover. Hey, I have a fish named Dipper. So you do, you have a fish. Yep. You and Brooks have beta fish and Ren has a little, little aquarium with some, well, there was some guppies in it. Now there is a guppy, but still a pet and I'm still good with it. So are you ready for some jokes? Chipmunk. Yep. Okay. The first joke comes from James and Helen. Thank you. Why did the teacher tie the students' shoelaces together? No idea. So they can go on a class trip. Huh. <laughs> That's actually really funny. All right. Joke two comes from Wesley. Thanks, Wesley. Why was six afraid of seven? 
Because 789? Because 789. That is a classic. Love that joke. And this joke comes from listener Onyx, and she made up this joke on her own. What feeling do you have to pay for? No idea. Alone. Ha! Huh. That's like a riddle, too. Because it's, it's it's smart, and she made it up. That's right? impressive. Do you get it, though? Because you have to pay loan. Because you have to pay a loan back. But then you can also feel alone. Head scratcher. All right. Let's do some trivia. Quinn. Yeah. Here's how the show works. Trivia for kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions we have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round number one. The category is dog breeds. Thank you to Annika, Josie, Amelia, and Nora for the idea. Thanks, everybody. Question one. What is the name of the dog breed that is a poodle mixed with another breed of dog? Question two. What breed of dog was Queen Elizabeth of England famous for owning? Question three. The Boston breed of what dog type is sometimes adorably known as the American Gentleman? Question four. What breed of dog is Snoopy from the Peanuts comic strip? Question five. What breed of dog is the unofficial mascot of the fire department? Question six. What herding dog breed is used the most in police forces around the world? Question seven. What breed of dog is known by the nickname Wiener Dog? Round one answers. Question number one, what is the name of the dog breed that is a poodle mixed with another breed of dog? Like a doodle? Like a golden doodle? Yeah, a doodle. So I read that there, I don't know, are like 14 different kinds of doodles. Like anything mixed with a poodle is a something doodle. So the answer is doodle. Doodle. (laughs) Question two. What breed of dog was Queen Elizabeth of England famous for owning? Corgis. Oh, you knew that one? I did know that one. She did have corgis. That is true. Corgis are those cute little short-legged furry cute dogs. (laughs) Corgis. They're kind of like wiener dogs, but they have a little bit of shorter bodies in their orange and white but they have those little stubby legs just yeah. like we know so i feel like corgis are one of those things that are kind of cool right now you know like mermaids and unicorns and llamas and corgis you know like you can get them in squishmallows and squishies and earrings and backpacks question three the boston breed of what dog type is sometimes adorably known as the american gentleman Boston Terrier? Yep, Boston Terrier. Our neighbors have a Boston Terrier. His name is Knox. Oh, that's a Boston Terrier. I thought a Boston Terrier was like uh, like little black dogs with like poked up ears and like hair going over nope, their nose. Those are schnauzers. And, like, oh, schnauzers. Or Scotty dogs, but yeah. Yeah, Scotty dogs. That's what I'm Yeah. Scotland. Question four. 
What breed of dog is Snoopy from the Peanuts comic strip? I mean, he's black and white, so a Dalmatian probably. He's a beagle. I feel like most Snoopy beagles. Beagle. I feel like most beagles are brown and white. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no. Like Shiloh and he's- Snoopy's a beagle. Question five: What breed of dog is the unofficial mascot of the fire department? This one's the old Dalmatian. This is Dalmatian. So the reason Dalmatians are associated with the fire department comes from way back in the day where fire engines used to be pulled by a team of horses. So Dalmatians and horses are very compatible. So the dogs were easily trained to run in front of the engines to help clear a path and guide the horses and the firefighters to the fires quickly. They are still chosen by many firefighters as pets in honor of their heroism in the past. Question six. What herding dog breed is used the most in police forces around the world? German Shepherds. Oh, yeah. Are those like the dogs that have pointy up ears? and Yeah, the big brown and black yeah, ones. Yeah, brown and black and yep. orangish. Question seven. What breed of dog is known by the nickname Wiener Dog? Is it the skinny dog? The Dachshund. Dachshund is one of those words that if you look at how it's spelled, it's pronounced nothing like it's spelled. I, think, I still think it's Dash Hund. Dash Hund is what it looks like. D-A-C-H-S-H-U-N-D. Dachshund. 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 That, huh. Yep. Round number two. The category is rocks, minerals, and gemstones. Thank you to Kyan, Theo, and Onyx for the idea. And thank you to Onyx for the gemstone questions. Thanks, everybody. Question one. What is the softest gemstone? Amethyst, amber, or sapphire? Question two. What fruit is a garnet named after? Question three. What type of rock is found in toothpaste? Limestone, granite, or quartz? Question four. True or false? All onyx gemstones are black. Question five. What is a mineral composed of pure carbon that is the hardest naturally occurring substance? Question six. Pyrite is the actual name of what tricky type of mineral? Question seven. What is the only gemstone made by a living animal? And now the answers to round two. Question one. What is the softest gemstone? Amethyst, amber, or sapphire? I want to say sapphire, but... It is amber. Is amber really a gemstone? Isn't it like... You know what's funny that you say that? I looked that up because I thought, is amber really a gemstone? And it is. But I thought it was just stuff that falls out of like tree sap and hardens bugs into fossils. Well, that's kind of part of it, but it is. I looked it up because I thought the oh. same thing. Oh. Question two. What fruit is a garnet named after? I don't know. A pomegranate. So this one was another one that I was like, no way. But this, it kind of blew my mind. Let me tell you this story. So the word garnet comes from the word pomegranate, as does the word grenade. Grenade, nothing to do with gemstones, but 
So grenade is named for the way a shrapnel scattering grenade imitates the seed scattering explosion of a smashed pomegranate. Huh. Does that make sense? Do you know what shrapnel is? Uh, no. <laughs> shrapnel is like, um, if you have, like the inside of a grenade sometimes has, I don't know, pokey pieces of metal. And when it explodes, those pokey pieces of metal fly out really fast and like, and go into things, whatever that is next to the grenade. So just like a pomegranate has all those seeds in it, the grenade has shrapnel and it explodes out just like a pomegranate. Huh. Um, is this about rocks and minerals and gemstones? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I saw that grenade was also named after pomegranate and I got sidetracked because I thought it was so cool. Question three. What type of rock is found in toothpaste? Limestone, granite, or quartz? Uh, limestone? That is correct. The limestone content in toothpaste functions as a moderate abrasive filler and as a thickening agent. I'm brushing my teeth with rocks? Parts, well, not, I mean, a very small powdery part of it, but yeah, there is some some in there on most toothpaste. Huh. Question four, true or false? All onyx gemstones are black. I'm going to say that's false because... It is false. Onyx can range in color from white to black. Each color variation has its own unique veining patterns too. Lighter color varieties can be somewhat translucent. There are onyx variations with blue, green, gray, gold, and brown shades. I only think of black when I think of onyx, so that's interesting that there's any colors, basically. Question five. What is a mineral composed of pure carbon that is the hardest naturally occurring substance? I don't know. A diamond! Oh, I don't know what I was expecting, like hail or... <laughs> Question six. Pyrite is the actual name of what tricky type of mineral? Fool's gold. Fool's gold. Pyrite is also called fool's gold. Its color makes it appear like a gold nugget. It is a naturally occurring iron disulfide material. Have you ever found fool's gold? I know that I've never found gold, but I know that I have found rocks that I'm like, <gasps> and then I'm just like, there's no way that's gold. You fooling rock you. I haven't ever actually seen it in rocks but like we went to a place one time and we like did like diamond things where like you grabbed a sifter and you could sift things out of it yeah you mined for gemstones yeah mine yeah. for gemstones where you just sifted sand and stuff out of a rock yeah then... that was pretty fun question seven what is the only gemstone made by a living animal i don't know a pearl oh a pearl is a reaction to an irritant within a mollusk. Pearls are formed when the mollusk secretes thousands of very thin layers of nacre, a secretion of calcium carbonate in a matrix that eventually coats an irritant, either man-made or natural. So does that make sense? <laughs> no. Let me explain. So you know how a clam or an oyster opens and closes its shell? Well, something can get in there that irritates the actual animal in the shell. And so what it does is it just coats it slowly and slowly and slowly with this nacre that makes it smooth so that it doesn't bother them anymore. Because if it was sharp or pokey or, you know, just downright irritating, when they make it round and smooth, then it doesn't hurt them anymore. And they make a pearl. Isn't that cool? I actually understood that. Yay! <laughs> Round number three, the category is hobbies. Question one. Thank you to listener Aston for the idea. Thanks, Aston. In doing what activity would you use terms like starboard, helm, and jib? Question two. Lake Pepin was the first lake ever to be used for what activity? Question 
Question three. Thanks to Arden for this one. Thank you, Arden. Thimbles are worn when doing what activity? Question four. What is the top ranked belt color in karate? Question five. Thank you to Ollie for this idea. Thanks, Ollie. What item is planted most often in American gardens? Question six. In what activity is a bow and arrow used? Question seven. What type of game is bridge? Round three answers. Question one. In doing what activity would you use terms like starboard, helm, and jib? Boating? Sailing. So here's what those words mean. Starboard is if you're facing forward, anything to the right of the boat. Helm is where you steer the boat. And jib is the second most common sail on any boat. So I think there's like a main sail and then there's a helm. So I've never been sailing you. I mean, if you haven't, then I probably haven't. <laughs> I've been parasailing, but not like boat sailing. Parasail. Question two. Lake Pepin was the first lake ever to be used for what? Kayaking. Water skiing. Can you water ski? No, I tried, but I couldn't. I think we need to try again. I bet you could do it this time. Question three. Thimbles are worn when doing what activity? Sewing. Yep, sewing or quilting. So the thimble is that little cap, I'd say. Would you call it a cap? That you put on your thumb so that you don't poke your skin with the needle. Question four. What is the top ranked belt color in karate? The black belt. Yes, that is correct. I wish we had, I think Brooks would really like karate. I wish we had it in our town, but we don't have a dojo. It's too bad. Question five. What item is planted most often in American gardens? This is a bit of a stretch. Tomatoes? Yes, tomatoes is the answer. I wish we had a garden. I tried to plant a garden a few years ago, and the ground in our backyard is basically clay. And so I couldn't grow anything. It might just be that I am... Not good at growing things, which is entirely possible as well, but I'm going to blame it on the soil. Question six. In what activity is a bow and arrow used? Archery. Archery. That is correct. Question seven. What type of game is bridge? Card. It is a card game. So we are a big card playing family. My family and Dan's family, and when we get together, we all play cards. What are some games that we play? Do you know? Um, you play Pinnacle. We do play Pinnacle a lot. We play Euchre. And gin. Wait. Rummy. Yep. Oh, we gin, play Rummy. Rummy. Yeah. 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 Euchre. That's what I was trying to think. Yeah, we do play Euchre a lot. Cards are fun. Round number four. That category is folklore. Question one. What is Paul Bunyan's pet ox's name? Question two. A centaur is a mythical creature with the upper body of a human and the lower body of which animal? Question three. Thank you to listener LaMaya for the idea. Thank you. 
In what country is folklore called yokai and refers to legendary ghosts, monsters, and spirits? Question four. Which famous tall tale features a man who planted apple seeds wherever he walked? Question five. Which Greek monster had only one eye and was very tall? Question six. Which mythical creature can be best described as a rabbit with antelope horns? Question seven. Which monster looks like a human, can turn into a bat, and drinks blood? Round four answers. Question one. What is Paul Bunyan's pet ox's name? Babe. Babe the blue ox, correct. I know there's somewhere where there's a life-size babe and Paul Bunyan statue. Well, I feel like I know this too. I don't know where, but I've seen a picture and they're really, really ginormous. So if you ever want to go see Paul Bunyan and babe, you can. Question two. A centaur is a mythical creature with the upper body of a human and the lower body of which animal? A horse. A horse, yes. Question three. In what country is folklore called yokai and refers to legendary ghosts, monsters, and spirits? Japan. Yeah, in Japan. So Lamaya sent me this idea for Japanese yokai, and I was like, I I do not know what that is. And she was also our first listener to write in from Japan, which is very cool. And so I was very interested. It's very similar to American folklore in like, it's just basically ghosts and, you know, monsters and things that were kind of made up and became legends and things. But here's something interesting. Some Pokemon characters and creatures are based on the Japanese yokai characters. Oh, is Pokemon originally from Japan? Yes. Yes. Oh! Cool, huh? Question four. Which famous tall tale features a man who planted apple seeds wherever he walked? John Chapman or Johnny Appleseed. And guess what? We have the same birthday. John Chapman and I share a birthday. Oh! But if he's a tall tale, is he a real person? Well, I think the tall tale is based Off on a man. Yeah. Chapman. So I think John Chapman was a real guy. And I think it sort of got stretched into this tall tale about Johnny Appleseed. Question five. Which Greek monster had only one eye and was very tall? The Cyclops. The Cyclops. It reminds me of a book that I used to read you when you were a child called I Love You, Stinky Face. Yes, yes. yes. And it was like the the kid says, like, would you love me if I was this? And the mom talks about what she would do if he was and one of them was a Cyclops. <laughs> Wait, what would you do if you met a Cyclops? Run. <laughs> Question six, which mythical creature can be best described as a rabbit with antelope horns? A jackalope. Yes, that is a jackalope. Correct. Question seven, which monster looks like a human can turn into a bat and drinks blood? A vampire. A vampire. Not true. Not a real thing. Just for funsies. Nothing to be scared of, right? Except for vampire bats. That's Except true. they only drink animal blood. So They are real, though. Round number five. The category is finish the lyric. Thank you to Madeline for the idea. Thanks, Madeline. Question one. Do you want to build a snowman or ride our bikes around the blank?
Question two. I just met you. This is crazy. Here's my number. So call me blank. Question three. You just got to ignite the light and let it shine. Just own the night like the 4th of July. Because baby, you're a blank. Question four. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a blank. Question five. Yeah, I'm going to take my horse to the old town blank. Question six. I've been staring at the edge of the water long as I can remember. Never really blank. Question seven. Under the sea, under the sea. Darling, it's better down where it's blank. Round five answers. Question one. You were just singing karaoke downstairs, so we'll see if you were singing any of these songs. Do you want to build a snowman or ride our bikes around the blank? Halls. Do you want to build a snowman or ride our bikes around the halls? That was very good. You sound just like her. (laughs) Good job. Question two. I just met you. This is crazy. Here's my number, so call me blank. So call me maybe. Yes, maybe is the answer. I just met you, and And this this is crazy. crazy. So So here's here's my number. No, here's my number, so call me maybe. Call me maybe. Question three. You just got to ignite the light and let it shine. Just own the night like the 4th of July, because baby, you're a... Firework! Firework! Come on, let your colors burn. Make it go, oh, oh, oh. Oh, man, people are going to fast forward through this. Question four. Because I'm happy, clap along if you feel like a room without a blank. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Roof is the answer. Question five. Yeah. I'm going to take my horse to the old town blank. Yeah, I'm going to take my horse to the old town road. I'm going to ride till I can no no more. more. Road was the answer. Question six. I've been staring at the edge of the water long as I can remember. Never really blank. Knowing why. I've been staring at at the edge edge of the water long as I can remember, never really knowing knowing why. From Moana. Oh, I love the music in Moana. Question seven. Under the sea, under the sea. Darling, it's better down where it's what? Wetter. Darling, it's better. Down Down where it's wetter. wetter. Take it from me. The new live-action Little Mermaid just came on Disney+, Plus, and I am pumped to watch it because we didn't have a chance to see it in the theater, so I am excited. And now it's time for the final exam. Now remember, you've heard these questions in the previous rounds, but these were the hardest ones we've had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question one. What breed of dog was Queen Elizabeth of England famous for owning? Corgis. Question two. What is the softest gemstone? Amber. Question three. 
Lake Pepin was the first lake ever to be used for what? Water skiing. Question four. In what country is folklore called yokai and refers to legendary ghosts, monsters, and spirits? Japan. Question five. What type of rock is found in toothpaste? Limestone. Question six. What type of game is bridge? It's a card game. Question seven. A centaur is a mythical creature with the upper body of a human and the lower body of which animal? A horse. And that's it. Boy, we've got a lot of birthday shout outs this week. First birthday shout out goes to Quinn. Oh, wait. Quinn. No, we already did meet him. Happy sorry. Birthday, Quinn. Okay, the next birthday shout out goes to listener Canyon. Happy birthday, Canyon. The next one goes out to Harper. Happy birthday, Harper. And the last one goes to listener Adarsh. Happy birthday Birthday. to all of you. Happy birthday to you. You've heard enough of our singing. Okay. So we'll leave you with this conversation starter. If you had a pet parrot, what would you teach it to say? <laughs> if you had a pet parrot, what would you teach it to say? Please give me money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Please give me money. <laughs> Bonnie Wine Cracker. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. And if you have a question idea or even an entire category, please email us at trivia for kids podcast at gmail.com.